Hey, if you have, it's good to see everybody this morning. I, I appreciate these men parking, uh, parking cars out here in the rain. Thank you for doing that. And, uh, thank you for all of those that brought the trailer and set up all this and all the technology. It's just a good day. Amen. It's a good day. I know you've, uh, I know y'all are familiar. I went through Daniel and, uh, if you'll turn to the next book over to the right, that's Hosea. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to preach out of it this morning. I, I'm still not clear if I'm supposed to preach through the book or if I'm just, I'm just supposed to preach a sermon, but I'm going to, I'm going to preach a sermon. Amen. But, uh, and I may preach the whole book, not this morning, but, uh, along the way. But if you'll turn with me to Hosea chapter 1, I'm going to read 11 verses this morning. Can everybody hear me? Oh, can y'all hear me over here? <laughs> All right. That's a good amen right there. Okay, everybody good? All right, here we go. In Hosea, Hosea chapter uh, 1, and the word of the Lord came to Hosea, the son of Barry, in the days of Uzziah, Jothan, and Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, and children of whoredoms, for the land has committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. And he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and I will, and I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and buried daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Lori Roma, for, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. And I will not save them by the bow, nor by the sword, nor by the battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. And when she had weaned, when she had weaned Laura Roma, uh, she she received she conceived and bare son and said and then God then said God call his name Loama for you you are not my people and I will not be your God yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which which uh, cannot not be measured nor be numbered and it shall come to pass that in the place where where I said was where it was said unto them. You are not my people. There, there it shall be said unto them, You are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Now I want you to skip chapter 2 and go to chapter 3 and let me read the five verses there. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman, talking to Hosea. Go, he said, the Lord said, go, go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, and yet, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who look to the, to other gods and love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek their Lord, and David their king, and shall fear the Lord his goodness in the latter days. I want you to pray with me this morning. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm struggling a little bit. I'm struggling with this message, but I know God's going to clear that up. But I can use your prayer this morning. 
So let's all pray together and ask for God's mercy and will for uh, upon this reading of our text today. Lord, we love you, and we praise you, and we come to you. We thank you for your kindness and for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, again. And we always thank you for your long-suffering and your patience towards us. Lord, as we look into our text today, Lord, we see, Lord, how you were patient with Israel and Lord, how you were patient with the, with the Jewish people. And, Lord, I pray that today that uh, we'll look upon you today for our only need. Lord, I pray that if for someone here today that don't know you, Savior, that you'll draw them to yourself today. And, Lord, we, we come to you with thankfulness. We come to you with humility today. Lord, just representing you as Christians today, help us to live out our faith each and every day of our lives. And, Lord, we want to lift this up into your hands. I pray for a holy peace upon the side of this old cattle hill today. And, Lord, that you'll grow your church, that you'll grow your church and bring great honor and great glory to you. Lord, thank you that you're ahead of the church. Thank you, Lord, that we're your bride. And, Lord, that you've got all things under control. And, Lord, we need you and we call upon your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Uh, let, me, let me say this today. The key theme for Hosea is a devotion to the Lord is like faithfulness in marriage. Uh, think about that today. You know, as uh, 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 let, 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 me, let me just kind of, let me talk about that. Devotion to the Lord is like faithfulness in marriage. You know, that's what God wants us. He, he, he wants us to be faithful to him because it is a marriage between God and us through his son, Jesus Christ. And idolatry is like adultery. In Hosea chapter 2 and verse 20 is the theme. He said, God said or, through Hosea, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. God is married to his people. Amen. And uh, if you're born again, if you're saved by God's grace today, I want you to know that God is, we are married to God. Now, if you understand that today, would you please honk your horn? Amen. Amen. Now, Hosea, the, the, he, he was a minor prophet. And Hosea means salvation or to save or to live, to deliver. It's the same meaning as the name Joshua, uh, to, uh, J uh, salvation, to save or to deliver. Hosea had a 40-year ministry as a minor prophet. And we need to understand that. He had longevity in the ministry. So I want you to look at a couple of things today. First of all, let's read verse 1 today. And I kind of want to give you a preface uh, of what's going to come. In verse 1, the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Mary, in the days of Uzziah, jo Jothan, and Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Now God was pleased with those kings of Judah. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, he was displeased with the, with the kings of Israel. That's kind of what it's, uh, it's, it's culminating to. But I want, you, I want to read this to you today. I, I studied quite a bit this week. Matter of fact, I studied each day on the book of Hosea where I can give you the right the right context of how it's all wrote and how it's all put together. And that's important when you preach the Word of God. Anybody home, say amen. All right. You know, it's, 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 it's okay to say cute quotes and those type things, and, and you can inspire people, but you've got to be, you got to be lined up with the Word of God in the context of how it's wrote before the Holy Spirit, the power of God, can rest upon that passage and be delivered like it should be. And that's what I'm concerned about today. You grow people through the Word of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if a man of God, if, if the leader don't is not in the Word and not in prayer, then how can he expect the people to grow in Word and prayer behind him? And that was the problem in Israel. Israel had led them astray along the way. Warren Wiersbe said this in the preface of this, and I wanted to read it to you because the different commentaries and the different uh, things that I studied this week, Warren Wiersbe put this all in the right perspective. And let me read it to you. And here it is. Prophets sometimes do strange things. Now here's, here's a prophet of God that God told him to go marry, uh, go marry a prostitute. That's what he told him to do. Now, is that not odd? Say amen. 
Amen. But prophets sometimes do strange things. For, for three years, listen to this, Isaiah embarrassed people by walking, by walking the streets dressed like a prisoner of war during that day. For several months, Jeremiah carried a yoke on his shoulders. The prophet Ezekiel acted like a little boy and playing war. And once he, once he used a haircut as a theological object lesson, and when his wife suddenly died, Ezekiel even turned that painful experience into a sermon. Why did these men do these particular things? Here it is. These particular things were really acts of mercy. The people of God had become deaf to God's voice and were no longer paying attention to God's covenant. The Lord called his servants to do these strange things. These action sermons were heartfelt illustrations in hopes that the people would wake up and listen to what, what, they, uh, what God had to say. Only then could the, could the nation escape divine discipline and judgment. That's what Israel is getting ready to go into is divine discipline and judgment. But no prophet preached a more painful action sermon than Hosea. Uh, he was instructed by God to marry a prostitute named Gomer, who subsequent, subsequently bore him three children, and he wasn't even sure that the last two children were fathered by him. Now, how would you like to have that stress in marriage? And he's making his marriage work. Let me tell you something today. You got stress in marriage today, and you got problems in your marriage today. You don't have any more problems than what Hosea had, and God wants you to straighten those things out in your marriage. If you got a godly woman that, that serves the Lord and you will not uh, yield to that with her, then, man, I want to I want to encourage you to take charge of your life and be the man of the house and be the spiritual leader of your house. If you are, amen, if you are the spiritual leader of your house and your wife isn't lined up, well, all I can tell you is you need to pray for her and you need to pray for that household because God will deal with her if, if she's a born-again Christian. But I can tell you today that we need to line up in our marriages today. And we need to line up in our marriage, most of all, to God. Anybody home, say amen. But I, I want you to know here today, he was instructed by God to marry a prostitute named Gomer, who subsequently bore him three children. And like I said, he wasn't even sure that the last two children were fathered by him. Then Gomer left him for another man. And Hosea had the humiliating responsibility of buying his own wife back. What was this all about? Let me say this. It was a vivid picture of what the people of Israel had done to their God by prostituting themselves to idols and committing to spiritual adultery. Since God's people today face the same temptation in James chapter 4 and verse 4, let me tell you this, church. We need to take heed to what Isaiah wrote for the people here. In, in, in Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 20, it says this. It says, and I will be, I will, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness. God of Marius, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And I can tell you today, I, he, he's saying right here that I will take you to be my wife in faithfulness, and you will know that I, that I am the Lord. Let me tell you why God did this. Because God loves us so much that he sees danger coming for Israel. Because Israel had moved away from the Lord, and God is wooing them back. Anybody home say amen. I want you to look in verse 1 today because it all starts with leadership. You know, today in the age of which we live, I can tell you that pastors need to line up like never before. They need to be preaching the word with uh, under the hand of the mighty God, under the power of the Holy Spirit, and teaching what the Word of God says, all the Word of God, the whole counsel of God. Amen? I'm talking about all of it, not just the easy parts. You know, it's fun to preach about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, about being in the fiery furnace, and the fourth man walking around would be Jesus. That That's fun to talk about. And you can preach a lot of sermons on that one topic along the way. But the bottom line is, what is unpopular is to preach that Israel was wayward to the Lord 
They had moved away from the Lord and they had got themselves in bondage for 70 years in bondage because of their sin of iniquity. Now, that's not popular to preach in the day and age in which we live. We like feel-good sermons. We like feel-good music. I like to feel good, don't you? Say amen. But the problem is, I feel better when God has forgiven me of my sin. That's when I really feel good, amen? And we need to understand that today. And it all starts with the leaders in verse 1. And the word of the Lord came to Hosea. Hosea had a personal and close relationship with the Lord. That's what Jesus wants with us today. He wants a personal and close relationship with him as Lord. He said, and the word of the Lord came to Hosea, the son of Barry, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, and Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Now, I can tell you here that Judah's kings were approved by God because as God designed it, the kings of Judah came through the lineage of David and the, and, and the, and the king David, and a man after God's own heart. That's what God said about David. Israel did not have God's approval over their kings, and their kings led the people astray and allowed Israel to worship gods as Baal, the false god of Baal, the false god of Pan, and many other gods. And this is where Israel got in trouble. And I can tell you today, this is where we get in trouble in the same way in the day and age in which we live. Yes, they were Israel was God's chosen people, but God's chosen people became a spiritual adulteress that substituted God with idols. And we do that today. And I tell you, we don't even know we do it. It all starts with the leaders that allows people to keep their practice, uh, keep their sin and practice their sin. God was sick of it during that day. I believe God's sick of it today. I just believe that today. Even though we, even though he was sick of it, let me say this. He loved Israel so much. He, he brought discipline to them so they would return to him. You know, God does that along the way. And as for the ungodly kings, when you look at this in verse 1, God did judge the ungodly kings. Matter of fact, Uzziah was struck down by leprosy. Jothan uh, condoned idolatrous practices. And Ahaz encouraged Baal worship. Jeroboam II. Now listen to Jeroboam II. The people of Israel was under. Israel was enjoying political peace and, mat and material prosperity. Now, is that not the day and age of which we lived in? They, they enjoyed political peace and material prosperity as well as this, moral corruption and spiritual decay and spiritual bankruptcy at the same time. Now, tell me that's not the day and age of which we live. And I, and I can tell you in verse 5, he says this, And it came to pass at that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Now, what's that mean? Well, God loves him so much. He loves Israel so much. He will discipline his own people. And he, and use a Hosea that will, that will marry a harlot to express his great love towards them. And he will lead them into spiritual, he will lead them into a time of discipline to get them right with him. I want you to look at the second thing this morning. Number two, God is the husband and Israel is the wife. Now, that's what this is all about today. Look down with me in verse 2. And in the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and the children of whoredoms. And for the land uh, hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. I want you to notice that today. When you say, when you look down to the part, he said the children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom. Notice the land that had committed Great whoredom. Who was the land? That was Israel. Israel, his wife. And I can tell you today, he had committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. And in verse 3, so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Deblam, which conceived and bare a son. So she bared a son uh, of, of whoredom. And let me, let me say that to, let me say this today in the day and age of which we live. That, you know, our sin, Church, it, it, it's passed down. Do you realize that our sin is passed down a lot of times? Do you understand that? Do you understand that God forgives us of our sin, 
But if we continue to stay in that sin and our kids watch us stay in that sin and then they, they, that's their example that they'll do the same thing and it goes down to the grandchildren. They watch their, their parents and they stay in sin. And then the, those great, great grandkids, they, they come along and they watch their parents. And now we got three or four generations that stay in sin because people don't turn from their sin today, their sin of iniquity. Now, do you understand that today? And I can tell you, he that's kind of what it's all, it's passed down. And I can tell you, when we live in sin and iniquity, it's always passed down. But look at verse 4 today. He said, And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Now, that's pretty sovereign. Let me talk about the word the name Jezreel. Jezreel means scatters. It means God scatters and God sows. Also, Jezreel was also a valley of Megiddo, which is Armageddon, where you'll fight, where the final battle will end when Jesus comes back at the end of the tribulation time with all of his saved, saved people on white horses and evil will be destroyed by the word of the Lord. Uh, Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 21. All those things will be taken care of. So I, Jezreel carries a lot of meaning. So I want you to understand it, mean, it means God scatters and God sows. And I want you to notice that today. But Because God is the husband and Israel is the wife. And, and I want you to look down with me in verse 5. I want to give you my third point today. That God loves Israel and he will allow Israel to to suffer because of his great love. Look now with me in verse 5. And it shall come to pass at that day I will break the bowl of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. So the, so he, here we got military uh, force coming. Verse 6. And she she conceived and they bare a daughter and God said unto him, call her name Laura Aroma. Uh, that, notice that name. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Pretty sobering today. You see that word, you see that name that he had given her, Lo Aruma. That means not pitied, not not to have mercy, not have compassion. Those three, those those words there speak a lot of truth about what God is getting ready to do for Israel and in discipline in them. But I want you to look at verse seven. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah. God will bless the house of Judah. And I, and I will save them by the Lord their God. And I will not save them by the bow or any kind of military might, nor sword, nor by battle, by horses, by, by ho or, or, nor by horsemen. And I want you to notice that today. And I can tell you today that, that they are blessed of God. And then when you come down to verses 8 and 9, it talks again about Naomi. Look down with me in verse 1. Now, when she had a wean, Laura Aroma, she conceived and bare a son. Now, what, what's the son's name? Then said God, call his name Laomi, uh, for you are not my people. That's what it means. You are not my people, and I will not be your God. Now, how would you like to have that name? That'd be a pretty bad name to have toting around, wouldn't it? But that's what the nation of Israel had become. Now, I want you to know that it, when, it, when you are named for you're not my people and I will not be your God, that's pretty weighty along the way. In verse 10, it says, And yet the number of children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. I mean, they're God's co chosen people, but notice, And it shall come to pass that in this place when it was said unto them, You are not my people. There it, shall, it, there it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Now, what's that all talking about? He, well, he's telling them that you're not my people, and it, it shall be said unto them. Then he, then he says, you are the sons of the living God. Well, that goes back down to verse 14, because God is going to woo them back to him. Look at verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. Talking about the children of Israel. What does that mean? That, that God will bring them back. God will buy them back. Amen. Verse 11. 
and I will also cause her, or, or chapter 2, I'm sorry, in, in chapter 2, uh, uh, verse 11, it says this, I will also, let, maybe, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, go back to chapter 1, verse 11, I'm sorry, then shall the children of, it, of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. So God is going to use ungodliness to bring godliness into the lives of people. He's going to use discipline to do that. When you look at verse 12, that God will gather Judah and Israel together as one because he loves them. God's going to work all this out for them, and that's what he's, that's what he's working towards right there. Let me say this today. God is working towards that today. Would, would you understand that today? You know, here we are. God has shut down the world. God has shut down America. And God is talking to us today. Why? Because God loves us and he wants his children to come back to him. Do you understand that today? Are we, you know, we think we're progressing and we think we're way out in front of what it was 2,000, 3,000 years ago, but here we are today doing the same things that Israel did. You know why? Because on a good day, we're sinners. On a bad day, we're still sinners. Amen? And God has sent his only begotten son to buy back the sins of man. I want you to understand that. And I want you to, I want you to understand that God loves us and he's not going to let us stay in sin in the day and age in which we live. We're no different than Israel. This, this country was built on Christian Judeo principles. As a matter of fact, you go to Washington, D.C., you look at all the different monuments and all the different uh, places that, that, that scattered around, there's more scripture in Washington, D.C. that you'll never read. You'll never read it unless you go there because they don't promote it. There is scripture all over that place because this, this country was founded upon the principles of Christian and the Bible. Do you understand that today? And I can tell you the first hundred years, there was great pro there was great progression in the land of America. Great. I mean, you look back and you go from a horse and buggy and you go, you go to driving around in a car within a hundred years. That's pretty good progression. Amen. Well, what happened? God blessed America because America was founded upon him. Now where are we at today? God has shut down America. Why? Because we've turned from it. We're no different than the nation of Israel. Do you understand the concept of this today? One of you, praise the Lord. <clears throat> but I want you to know, number four, God told Israel to put away their sin and get their marriage with him right. Look now with me in, in chapter 2 and verse 1. I'm going to read that. Say unto you, brethren, Ami, and to your sister, Roma. Now, let me, let me stop right here before I read any more. I want to say this, that God married the children of Israel at Mount Sinai when Israel accepted his covenant. And that's in Exodus chapter 19, verses, uh, chapter 19 through chapter 21. That's the covenant at Mount Sinai that Israel accepted from the Lord. Then he was grieved over them when they forsook him for false gods of the land of Canaan. You all understand that today? Say amen. And I want you to know that, that like Gomer, like Gomer, Israel began as an idolater. God, uh, he uh, married Jehovah and eventually returned to her idolatry. That's what Israel did. Israel began in idolatry. They married Jehovah during that covenant, that covenant on Mount Sinai. And then eventually they returned to her idolatry. These children of Gomer represented this. God's marriage is holy because he instituted it. Being saved is holy because God has instituted it. And God wants to be married to a believer. Would you understand that to say today? Say amen. But let me ask you something. Are you a gomer today? I want you to think about that. Look down with me in verse 2. I, want, I call this the I will chapter. That God says some 20 times what he will do. And of what God says, he always does. Do you agree to that? And he says that this is the I will chapter. Let me go ahead and read it quickly. Plead, plead with your mother, plead. 
for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight, and let her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that was born. I will make her as the wilderness and set her like dry ground and slay her with thirst. That's kind of what we're going through in the land today. Uh, it, look at thy wills in verse 4. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they, for they be children of whoredoms, for their mother has played the harlot. She, she that conceived them has done shapefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers that, that give me bread and my water, and my wool and my flax and my oil and my drink, my lamb, my carnal ways, my sin. I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to be in the world. I got to be in the world. You understand that today? That is where Israel was and that's where we are today. Look at the I wills here in verse six. In verse six. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up the way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths and she shall follow after the lovers and she shall not overtake them and she shall not seek them but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return unto my first husband and then was it better with me than now. Let me tell you something. We're not going to prosper in the land until we return until our first love and that's Jesus Christ today. For if she did not know that I gave her corn and wine, all the bless, all, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. Do you understand that today? He said, to, for she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. I gave you all the good stuff and you turn around and you worship Baal. You, you turn around and gave it to Baal instead of, instead of giving it to God Jehovah. Therefore, I will return, I will return, will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in this season thereof, and I'll recover my wool and my flax and give it to the cover and naked. He, he's going to take it away. Look where we're at today, church. He's took it away. And he said, and now we'll discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall, shall, shall de deliver her out of my hand. <clears throat> and I will also cause her mirth to see uh, for her, first, her feast days and her new moons and her Sabbath and all the solemn feasts. I can tell you that Israel loved to go to the feast, but their heart was far from the Lord. They, they might have went to the feast, but their heart was far from him. God shut down all their celebrations. Think about that. Sometimes, church, we just go through the motions. We go through the motions and, and, and we forget all about loving Jesus today. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And he said, and he said, and, and I and the Father will make our abode with you. Let me tell you something, church. He's not happy with us today. Yes, he loves us. Yes, he's, he's disciplined us. Yes, he's bringing us back around. Why? Because he wants us to, be, to serve him and not serve all those false idols today. Do you understand what the text is saying today? Is that not where we're at in our land today? He said, I will destroy her vines and her fig trees wherewith she has said. You know, I, I watched a farmer plow up. I watched a farmer plow up green beans the other day on TV because... They couldn't get them picked. They couldn't get them to the market. Plowed the whole field up. And you think about that. I mean, hey, listen, we, we could have ate those green beans. Think about that. You know, only God institutes things like that. He said, I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, wherewith she has said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, a false god, wherein she burned incense to them. She decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went forth after her of lovers and forgot me, saith the Lord. Listen, they, they moved towards false worship of that day, and God was still loving them during that time. But he, God is not going to bless them. He's going to take away from that. And in verse 14, he said, Therefore, 
I will allure her. I will lure her. I will woo her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably into her. Notice that today. Notice what he's saying today. And I will give her vineyards from thence in the valley of Achor, uh, Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there in the days of her youth as in the day that she come up out of the land of Egypt. See, God is already talking about their prosperity when they come back to him. we got to come back to him today, church. And it shall be at that day that saith the Lord, Thou shalt call me Isha, and shalt call me no more Baal. God wants you serving him and not serving Baal. He said, I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day I will make a covenant uh, for them with the beast of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will... Break the bow of the sword and the battle of the earth, and I will make them to lie down safely, and I will betroth them, marry them unto me forever. Yea, I will marry them unto them in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies, and I will even betroth or marry them unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. God is waiting for us to return to Him, but He don't, he don't want to make us return. He's going to discipline where we'll want to come back to Him in love and relationship with Him today. You understand that? And it shall come to pass that that day I will hear, I will hear, I love this part. And it shall come to pass that that day I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth. He's waiting for us to return. And the earth shall hear shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel, and I will sow her, sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had obtained uh, not attained mercy, and I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, You are my God. That's what he's waiting for. Let me ask you something today. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something that's very private today that you've got to answer in your heart. Have you been to the cross today? Is he your Lord today? Or is the ways of the world your Lord today? You need to answer that today. You know, so many people have made a profession of faith, but God has never changed their heart along the way. I'd be worried about that. God wants a relationship with the believer today. God wants a personal relationship with the believer today. I told somebody yesterday or maybe the day before, I can't remember what day I'm in now. Y'all ever lost track of time? Have y'all lost track of days during this time we're not social distancing? I have. I think it was Friday. If you ever went through the Blackaby studies like the Experiencing God Bible studies, you learn, you learn how God speaks to you. And God speaks in four ways. Number one, God speaks through his word. The word of God, he speaks to us. It's alive. Number two, he speaks through prayer. And through that, he speaks through the power of the Holy Spirit through that. Do you understand that today? And he also speaks through circumstances. Sometimes God, when we're not listening, we're not in prayer, we're not in the word, and the power of the Holy Spirit don't work. Sometimes he has to use circumstances. He'll change our circumstances to get our attention where he can talk to us and we can listen. Do you understand that today? Then he talks through the, the church. What does that mean? Well, God, God sends his people along the way. Now, I'm not talking about one of those that come up to you and say, I got a word from you from the Lord. When somebody comes up and tells me that, I told go ahead and turn it off because that's not a word from the Lord. When people speak to me, they bear witness with what God has already talked to me about, and they'll come up and say, you know, I read this passage of Scripture the other day, and, here, and this is what it said to me, and I'm thinking, that's what it said to me. It bears witness to one another. God talks to his church, his church people, kingdom people. And I hate to even tell you this. I hope you understand that, that, that that's not just Baptist either. That's Church of Christ, that's Presbyterian, that's Catholic, that's, that's Methodist, that's those that are born again. 
No matter what flavor you're under, I can tell you God talks through His church today and it bears witness. And today while I'm preaching, there's not there's other denominations that say, He's right, you need to listen to Him today, that God has disciplined this country and because He wants this country and this world to come back to Him and serve Him, the one and only true God, through Jesus Christ our Lord today. Amen. We need to understand that today. Then number five, and the fifth thing I want to talk to you about today is God told Hosea to go buy back Gomer. Gomer done left, committed adultery. He's going to go buy her back. Now I want you to think about that today. I want you to look in chapter 3 and verse 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman, beloved to her friend. She done run off somebody else. Yet an adulteress, that's what she is, according to the love of God, uh, to, according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons of, of wine. He's, he's using that for an analogy. He's using that for an analogy today. And I, I want you to understand that God is dealing with Israel's relationship with him. And because God is holy. And he talks about that in chapter 2 in these verses 2 through 13. And God is love and he has a holy love. Not a sentimental feeling type love, but a holy love. And he, 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 he's looking at, into adultery and spiritual adultery, adultery that we're in today. In chapter 2 verses 5 through 9, he's looking at ingratitude that we carry today. In chapter 2 and verses 10 through 13, he's looking at hypocrisy today. And God is willing to buy back his people because they have left their first love because he loves them and God is working to bring us back again church do you understand that today we have played the harlot we have left God for other gods He's willing to buy us back and he's done that today through his son Jesus Christ. God has bought back the sinner through his son Jesus Christ the Messiah and Savior and many have accepted him and he has purchased them by his blood but many has went back into the world and married Gomer the world, the harlot. You no, know, Hosea here in verse 1 he's, he, he, he allowed himself to be humiliated for his bride just like Jesus was humiliated on the cross for the church, the bride of Christ. Did you know that the church is the bride of Christ? And he humiliated himself upon that cross today, but he purchased us by his blood anyway. Do you understand that today? All across this nation, all across the world, people that call themselves Christians, they have, they have committed spiritual adultery. By serving other idols. I want you to think about that today. You know God's tired of hypocrisy. He's tired of being, you not being grateful. In gratitude. Just like the children of Israel. You know. He's going to buy back his people. He has. Because he has a great love. You know God is talking to the world today. And it's not popular to preach these type of sermons today in the age of which we live. As a matter of fact, if this sermon comes up on the YouTube, they'll watch about half of it and they'll turn it off. And they won't hear the good news of it. They just don't want to deal with their sin today. And that's what God wants to deal with today. He wants to deal with our sin today. He wants us to turn from our sin, our sin that we hold on to, and return to a holy God. That's what He wants today in His church that's what he wants from his pastors today. Pastors need to turn from their sin and turn, return to a holy God and preach the whole book instead of part of the book. He said in verse 2, he says, So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver. That's half the price of a slave. Got her for half price. And for a homer and a half of barley. And I said to her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be 
be for another man, so I will also be for thee. Let me tell you what God's telling us today. I brought you back through my son, Jesus Christ. He paid the full, full price for sin. I bought you with the price through his precious blood today. And he wants you to return to him. That means you're going to have to turn off some of the things you're watching. It means you're going to have to stay away from some of the people that you're talking about that tell dirty jokes. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without teraphim. But look in verse 5. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek their Lord God and David their king and shall fear the Lord his goodness in the latter days. Let me tell you something. Israel will come back to God today one day and it will be through the Son Jesus Christ. He's always, he's already allowed us Gentiles to come through him through the Son of Jesus Christ. But many have played the harlot, and he wants you to return to him today, and he wants you to be have a relationship with him today where he can guide this great nation and be blessed, and this nation come back to him and be blessed like he intended it for it to be. But now we're stuck in social distancing today. You understand where we're at today? You know, God, says, God wants us to turn and seek the Lord. And just like the plagues of Egypt, God has taken away everything we worship. I know some of you are like to watch wrestling. <clears throat> and there is a wrestler named Hulk Hogan. That's not his real name. Matter of fact, that's his, that's his wrestling name. Hulk Hogan, he said this. Somebody sent it to me a while back. It's what he said. It's what God is saying. He said, this is what God is saying. You want to worship athletes? I'll shut down the stadiums. You want to worship musicians? I will shut down the civic centers. You want to worship actors? I will shut down the theaters. You want to worship money? I will shut down the economy and collapse the stock market. You don't want to go to church that I'm the head of and I died for to worship me and to hear my word. I'll make it to where you can't go to church and go inside the church. You want to live through your children that I created and gave you and to teach and I gave you for you to teach them to honor and to worship me. Instead, you played the harlot and teach them to commit to a sport that you will put first over me. I will make it. That, you lose, that you'll lose your income and make you stay at home until you know that I am God. Think about that. You want to kick me out of the schools? I'll shut the schools. I'll shut the schools up until you learn to love me and keep my commandments and you will learn to pray. You want to kill my unborn children that I created in the womb and you want to redefine my marriage that I instituted between man and woman with me and you want to live together in adultery without my holy covenant of marriage, then I'll send a virus that you're not able to stop until you stop, confess, and repent and you worship me and you return to me. That's what he's saying today. God. Because he loves us, he wants us to return to him. Verse 5, Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their land. Church, you're some, of the most faith, you're some of the most faithful people I know. But our job has got bigger because we've got to live for him like never before. It's going to get tougher. But we've got to stay with him. We've got to stay with the Lord. Let me ask you something today. Who are you serving? Who are you serving? Have you married the harlot, the world? God's waiting for you to come home. 
God wants to save you today. Maybe God's tugging on your heart to be saved today. I don't know. But we have a nation of people that claim that they be Christians, but they're far away from the Lord. We need to return to the Lord today. Do you understand that? You understand what it, Hosea is all about? We're no different than the children of Israel. You read the book and you think, how can they not see all that? How can we not see all this? He's waiting for you. Maybe God did with your heart today. Maybe there's sin in your life that you're passing down to your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. It's going to be passed down, and God wants you to God wants you to confess that sin now and get out of that sin and turn from your wicked way and call upon His name, and He will heal your land today. I can't change a man's heart, but God can. I know this ain't a popular sermon, but we need it today. We need to understand that God has got to be in control of our lives. God has got to be back in control of our churches today. If it's not going to be the real church that's governed by a holy God that has the love of God in its people, and if they're not controlled by the power of the Holy Spirit, if the pastor don't preach the whole counsel of God, if the pastor don't love his people, and the pastor just wants a great name for himself, and the church just wants to brag about what they do in the day and age in which we live. Listen, we need to return to him. We might as well just shut the church down and be called a social club if we're not going to let him be God. We can't let the church become a social club. We need to follow him, church. We need to follow him. Maybe God deal with your heart today. We don't have an altar, but I tell you, there's an altar in your heart. There's a void in your heart. There's a hole in your heart that God wants to fill today, and only He can fill it. I'm getting ready to pray. You know what you need. You know what God's dealing with you about today. Romans chapter 14. Y'all better amen me. I'm going to start preaching again. I talked to a guy about this very thing. John chapter 14, verse 21. It is good to neither eat flesh, nor drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbles, or is offended, or made weak. Guys, we need to, we need to surrender to a holy God. And put away the bottle. We need to put away the pot. We need to put away all the ungodliness that's in our homes because our homes reflect what the church is supposed to be. Our homes reflect what salvation is supposed to be. Our homes is where we need to start today. And men, you need to rise up and be the godly leaders of your home. You understand that today? God, deal with your heart today. We're going to pray. Y'all know how to get a hold of me. You need to get a hold of me. I'll be glad to talk to you over the phone and pray with you, whatever the need may be. But I, I can tell you today, God's dealing with his people. Let's pray today. Lord, we come to you thanking you for your kindness and goodness. And Lord, I know there's people here today that don't know you as Savior. Right now, as they open up their heart to you, they ask you to forgive them of their sins and come live in their heart and save them today. Lord, I pray that you'll embed upon their hearts the repentance that you've called them to do. And Lord, that you'll save them today. That you'll take that burden of sin off of them like never before. And Lord, I pray that there's there are people here today, and I know that they're praying they they got, they got sin in their lives that they know that's being passed down. They know they're not the right example. They know they're not living in holiness today. Lord, would you prick their hearts? Lord, would you draw them back to you? Help them to see that you're married to them. You're going to stay with them. 
Lord, turn them to repentance today. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we need you today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Appreciate y'all being here today. Has it been good to be here today? Amen.